the word of the Lord to the people of God. Amen. Galatians, the fifth chapter. I would like to choose verse 1 as our opening scripture. Galatians 5 and verse 1. And it reads, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Look at somebody next to you and say, friend, sound like the scripture is saying to the believer who's been liberated, stay free. That's our subject. Stay free. You may be seated in his presence. This verse, Galatians 5 and 1, I read it again. Three times is not too much. Amen, because we don't have too much of God because we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Is that not three? But I read this scripture, amen, for the third time. Verse 1, chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Somebody shout liberty. Somebody shout bondage. And right there, put a pen right there, amen. I got to recognize these ushers, amen. Our new ushers, amen. Our male ushers that serve so well. Stand, men. And our, and, 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 and our hospitality men, stand again. I, I don't want to get a choir too much prop without recognizing you guys, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for serving today, amen. Amen. Now take that pen out. <laughs> Amen. So these two key words in this verse of scripture is liberty and bondage. And both of them represents a different position. I've heard in your voice, amen, that freedom is better than bondage. Is that right? Amen. I sense on your faces, amen, that you're not here today for any other thing, amen, but to learn more about the freedom that God gives us. Is that right? Amen. So that being true, amen, we must understand what bondage brings. Bondage brings burdens. Bondage brings heaviness. Bondage brings in our lives a, a life of defeat. So therefore, we who are liberated, amen, by Jesus Christ, we are told to stay free from what? Bondage. In Asia, the Middle East, amen, uh, farmers there, they use what we call oxen, amen, to ply their rice fields, amen. Uh, this oxen, amen, this animal, this beast that they use to ply the field is a very strong animal, amen. He's an animal, amen, that's thousand times stronger than the farmer who plies him. Amen. But what the farmer has learned, amen, the way to keep this big beast, this big animal under subjection and under control, we will place a heavy yoke around his neck. And this yoke that's placed around this animal's neck sends a message to his brain, amen, that he's weaker than the one who plows him. So every time, amen, that the farmer, amen, would crack his whip or give a command, amen, the oxen, he goes in the direction by which he has been trained. And he only does that because around his neck is a yoke that's very heavy, amen, and it keeps his head down by keeping him under submission to the farmer. This bondage, amen, that Paul speaks about as he talked with the Galatians, amen, is a yoke that has been placed around our neck from the time that we are born because we're all born in sin and shaped in what? Shaped in iniquity. Amen. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So therefore, none of us can ever say that we never sinned or we never done wrong because we were born and shaped in sin. The Bible said that if we say we have sinned not, then we have lied and the truth of God is not in us. 
every one of us sometime, amen, from our mother's womb until we get saved, we were aliens concerning the commonwealth of God. Amen. We all had like passion for the flesh and the things that the flesh desire over the things of God because we had this yoke around our neck. The enemy comes, a man, that we might believe that we are still yoked. A man, to get us to feel like that, that yoke is still around our neck. But God told me to tell you to lift up your head, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in, who is the king of glory, the Lord. Amen, money in battle, the God of our salvation who have delivered us from the yoke of bondage and have given us a freedom that can't be bought or expressed any other way than through Christ Jesus. That's a good place to shout right there. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad I'm free. And I'm planning to stay free. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. We understand here, amen, that the life that we now live came through a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And it came through Jesus Christ who mentions in the text today, amen, that we are made, made free from the flesh that we might now walk in the spirit. And I charge you today before the Lord Jesus Christ that anything that you do in the flesh, amen, you will pay for it. And everything you do in the spirit, you will be rewarded for it. For they that live after the flesh, they shall die. But they that live after the spirit, they shall live. I believe I'm looking at people today who choose to live. Am I right? Am I right over here? Am, am I right here? Am, here? 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 Am I right? Amen. We want to do what? Live. And we want to live as unto the Lord and not live as unto our flesh. It clearly captures Paul's message. Amen. These particular verses. Amen. It brings about a man, what we love and what we appreciate, that's grace and mercy. For the Bible said, where sins abound, grace abounds much more. Have you realized that before you got saved, that sin had captured you? Sin was controlling you, but God saved you and delivered you, and now you are a new you? Aren't you glad about that? And not only has God delivered us and made us free in Christ Jesus, amen, but if we stomp our toe or if we fall on our knees or if it looked like we make a mistake or a bad decision, we have a father who we can cry to and shout, I'm a father. Come on, somebody. Amen. Who's just and faithful to forgive us of our sins if we repent. Somebody shout, repent. So you can stay free even if you fall, if you repent. You say that again. Amen. Somebody had to repent right lately. You ought to jump up and shout it. Amen. Even if we sin and come short of God, if we repent, we can maintain a freedom in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not talking to the perfect people today. I'm talking to us who make some mistakes sometimes. I'm talking to people like me sometimes who make a bad decision. I'm talking about people like me that come short sometimes. But I know a God. Who's able to keep me from falling? Is that all right? You got to be like the commercial, amen. If you choose to fall, you lay there, don't wallow in it. Cry out to God and say, help me. I can't get up. I can't get up on my own. But I can get up in Christ Jesus. I have fallen and I can't get up. Can't get up on my own. But the God who delivered me, the God who saved me, his ear is toward me, and he's hearing me, and he's come to my cry. Won't he come to your cry? Anybody in here had to call on him? Anybody came short of you had to just say, Lord, forgive me? Oh, Jesus. And he forgives us because he wants us to be free. He don't hold us in bondage like we hold each other. 
He don't condemn us like we condemn each other. But he's faithful and just to forgive us of how much sin. All sin. His theme, if we would read into it, amen, is grace. God's grace alone by which persons can be saved. Christ is the source of grace and freedom and is the result of it in our lives that calls us, amen, to be able to walk in this liberty. We do well, beloved, amen, to rehearse the nature of that freedom. Every day you ought to rehearse the nature of that freedom. How do I rehearse the nature of that freedom? When I get up in the morning, first of all, I said, Lord, I want you to search my heart, search my spirit, search my mind and my soul. If there's anything that I've said, done, carried out, or felt, I want you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. In other words, amen, the beginning of my day is praise and worship to an awesome God, amen, but a prayer of repentance should precede that so that your worship can be accepted. Your worship is important because, amen, what you worship, you bow down to. What you praise, you lift up to it. And God is saying today to every one of us, amen, that's in this room, glory to God, amen, remember, amen, how we should do from day to day. We should rehearse the nature of the freedom that's been given to us. By applying the word, staying in the word, studying the word, amen, receiving the word daily, that we might be washed by the word, that we might be sanctified through the truth, that whatever's trying to dirty me up and nasty me up, I put the word on it. And when I get the word lathered down in my soul, it will push what's in my heart out of my heart because David said when adultery got in my heart David said when murder got in my heart David said when lying got in my heart he said when deceit got in my heart he said I called on God and said Lord create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit have I got some help in here it's necessary that we stay free we got to stay free from the infectious nature of sin. Because sin will come in and touch one area and spoil the whole. And infection is something that has a tendency to spread. If it's not attended to. Am I right medical people? Amen. So therefore we must understand that God wants us to stay free from sinful diseases. Cancer has a tendency, if it's terminal, to kill the body. But sin is more a terrorizer to man than cancer. Because sin will kill the soul of man. For the Bible said, the soul that sinneth, it shall what? Die. Mm. Imprisonment have caused a lot of people to lose their liberty to enjoy life and to walk in this present world, amen, and be social and can go when they desire to go and can do pretty much what they want to do, amen. Incarceration in prisons and jails have taken that privilege away, amen, but there's a greater bondage and there's a greater prison than that and that is when you have locked yourself away from God and grace and mercy is there to plead your case but you rather continue in the life of disobedience and rebellion than to walk in the light of God's truth. Right. To be taken captive by your own carnal thinking. To be taken captive by your own fleshly desires rather than presenting your body a living sacrifice unto the Lord and giving God your all in all, amen, the bondage that you are in is greater than prison. It's greater than being jailed. It's greater than being put away for life without being able to do and to go, amen, when you are captured by sinful nature that controls you, that has you in a bondage that you can't break away from on your own and you make up your mind that I'm going to stop doing it and three days later you're doing the same thing. You said I'm going to give it up. I'm never going to get in another relationship like that only to find yourself walking in another relationship just like the one you got out of. That's bondage. 
that's imprisonment. That's a thief. That's a destroyer. That's a spirit that come to take us out. Amen. But God said, I have set you free. And who the son have made free is free indeed. What you mean, preacher? I don't care what comes your way. If you choose to stay liberated, the devil can't take you. Amen. He can't apprehend you. Amen. He can't take you. Amen. At his will. It has to be at your will. So it's left entirely up to you to stay free. Look at somebody say, stay free. Stay free. Amen. Freedom is simply a release. In Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. Look what happens when we release from the oppression and the suppression of sin and come into the fold of God. Amen. We have been now announced not only as new creatures, amen, but now we have been looked at as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And it goes a little further. It gives us this freedom, the opportunity to be an heir and joint heir with Jesus the Christ. So we got it going on when we come over here. Because when we were on the other side of the track, most of us came from families that were poor, beggarly, didn't have enough, couldn't even send us to college, amen, couldn't even buy extra stuff. Amen. When you ask them for something, they said, don't ask me for nothing because we ain't got nothing. And then when we came into the family of God through this adoption that we have through Jesus Christ, now that we have been adopted, I mean chosen, I'm talking about picked out. Amen. God said, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. And I want that one. Now that we've come into this family, look what we receive. Now we're no more poor and beggarly. Amen. We're no more down and out. We are above only and not beneath. We are the head and not the tail. We are the lender and not the barrier. We are blessed going out. Blessed coming in. Blessed sitting down. Blessed standing up. Why? Because we are heirs and joint heirs. With Jesus Christ. Woo! Isn't that wonderful? To know that if you stay free, you can stay a son, you can stay a daughter, you can stay an heir and a joint heir with Christ. Rather than living on the other side of the track where the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. Woo! Look at somebody say, I choose to stay free. We never understand the full impact of the meaning of Christian freedom unless we understand the encompassing nature of sin and evil. That's why I've been talking about sin. I've been talking about wrongdoing, which is evil. Amen. That we might understand there is two sides of life. There's a good side. There's a bad side. Huh? There's a right and there's a wrong. Amen. There is sin, and then there is righteousness. So we have to choose whether we want to be free or want to stay in bondage. Then after we get free, we have to choose again to stay free. A lot of guys, a lot of women go to prison and do time and get out just for prison to be a revolving door. They're out and right back in. And usually for the same thing they got locked up for the first time. Y'all might know somebody like that. Pretty much we all got one in our family, if not more, that have gone through that. It was a choice that was made. It was a decision. Rather than just getting a shovel, 
get down in a ditch and just shovel it out until you can dig your way out of your situation, you went right back to hustling drugs, right back to prostitution, right back to whatever the sin was because you were familiar with it and I know how to do that and I can survive by it. Not rethinking, not searching out why you went to jail the first time. We make that crazy decision. What got you in jail the first time, you thought you were smarter than the cops. <laughs> you thought you were going to get rich and all of these other things rather than understanding that what got you in trouble the first time will get you in trouble the second time and usually the second time around they see you as a menace or they see you as one that is looking like a uh, what kind of criminals they call them when they're ongoing? Criminal. And habitual criminal. And you're going to serve, be served worse the second time than you were the first time. The enemy don't want you to know that when it comes to sinful nature. He wants you to think, amen, you got away with it. Oh yeah, you were being with different ones, amen. And you standing back clapping your hand talking about, I didn't get pregnant, but you got AIDS. And don't even know it because it can stay incubated in your body for years before it surfaces. I took, I robbed, I stole, I got money by ill doing, amen. And look like you got away, amen. But the Lord is saying, be not deceived, for I am not mocked. Whatever man sow it, that shall he reap. Everything you've done wrong, you're going to see it again. But if you let grace and mercy have her work in your life, if you allow Jesus to come in your heart, amen, and refill you with life, come on somebody, through his blood transfusion, if you let Jesus come in your life, amen, that stuff that you did before, he said, I will cast it in the sea of forgiveness never to rise again. And now that you're free of that, do what? Stay free. Stay free. That's all you got to do. It's just do the right thing. Look, somebody said, do the right thing. Paul knew that sin had not a long affected human nature, reducing us to slaves of our passions, but had also affected the entire universe. The whole creation groans and labor, Paul said. Everything now, amen, moans and groans because of sin nature. In Romans 8, verses 18 through 22, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectations, the expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Everything is waiting for the sons of God to get our house in order that we can prove to them that godliness is the way because we are an example of godly living. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Verse 21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth, travaileth, and pain together until now. Amen. God is waiting for us to get our act together. God is saying through Jesus Christ, I left everything you need to become everything that the Father wants you to be. All you got to do is apply, make application. Just show the devil that you are tired of his messing. And now you want a better life. That you want to serve a God who loves you and is good to you. Who watches over you. Who makes provision for you. Let the devil know it's over. And I'm going over on the Lord's side. And let God get the glory out of my life. Oh, we are the sons of God. And it had not yet appeared Amen. What we shall be through all we go through. But the Lord is saying at that great day 
of reckoning. When he appear, we shall be like him. God had to do something of cosmic significance. Amen. What he did, amen, the gift of himself and his son on the cross revealed the suffering heart of God. From Adam on, sin has infected pain and inflicted pain in the heart of God. The Lord has repented that he ever made man, but he didn't give up on man. For 400 years, God didn't even communicate with man. From Malachi to the book of St. Matthew, something happened. Our sins and our deeds, amen, it just touched God's heart to the point that God said, I got to rescue them. I got to get them back to me. Through the first Adam, we came short of God's glory. And through the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, God returns his glory. Amen. God saved us from the sin that Adam committed and gave us salvation through Jesus Christ, who took our sins in his body. And I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. I'm trying to stay down this morning, y'all. Amen. But I realized that if Jesus hadn't died, I wouldn't live today. If Jesus hadn't given his life, I wouldn't have life today. You need to high five somebody say he lives. Therefore I live. Amen. Humans and all creation and bondage to sin under God's grace. Amen. His crucified son is received in faith to release us by his act. We have been reconciled back to the Father through his Son, whom? Jesus the Christ. Somebody shout Jesus in this room. Jesus. Through Jesus, there's been great reconciliation. Amen. Reconciliation is another aspect of Christian freedom. Is there a greater bondage than being shut up on oneself, being shut off from another, or being estranged from God? No, there's not a greater bondage. Above all else, Paul sees the work of Jesus Christ, a work of reconciliation. Reconciliation means that a restoring, a bringing back, a making things right again. Have I got a little help in here? We were made for friendship and fellowship with God. By disobedience, rebellion, amen, we ended up eliminated from God's blessings. But thank be to God, through Jesus the Christ, he qualifies us that if we abide in his word, his word abide in us, we can ask anything in his name and God will give it to us. Anybody believe that today? I just need one somebody that will help me to preach this thing. I feel Jesus down in my soul because I know if Jesus hadn't died for me, my sins wouldn't have been forgiven. I was like many of you, if not all of you. I was lost, but through Jesus Christ, I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I was without hope, but I got hope in Jesus Christ. Is anybody here enjoying this hope in Jesus? In Galatians 4 and 7, you are no longer a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir and a joint heir through Jesus Christ. In Joshua 23 and 8, but cleave unto the Lord, your God, as ye have done until this day. I love Joshua. He picked it up. He looked at the rest of them. He said, many of you have joined yourself to the deeds of the fathers on the other side of the flood. But I made up my mind as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Have I got anybody that want to stay free, that want your house free, that want your family free, that want your mind free? In Job, the 11th chapter, verses 14 and 15, if iniquity be in thy hand, put it away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. I come to serve notice on the devil today. He may try to shut down 
the lights in the building. He may try to shut down the sound system. But I heard the Lord say, Liberty is without lights. Liberty is without sound. If you make up in your mind, for God I live and for God I die. God will. Won't he do it? God will see you through. God will bring you out. Won't he do it? Can he do it? Shout ya! Shout ya! Shout ya! Hey! And we're going to close it. Job 11, verse 15. For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but that of love. And a power. And of a what? Sound mind. For we realize if we stay free, there's no weapon <laughs> formed against us that shall prosper because of who we are and whose we are. We are the heritage of God. Woo. That's who we be. That's who we is. That's who we are. I don't care how you put it. We's God's. And he's ours. Is that all right? Understanding. If we stay free. It constitutes. An eternal life. With God. If we stay free from sin. On this side. For just a hundred years. If you live that long. Or 200 years if you live that long. If you stay free on this side, when life comes to an end and you step out of this life unto eternal life, staying free on the other side will constitute eternal life with God. Oh, you ought to praise Him. Hallelujah. An old favorite scripture, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Yeah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at somebody say, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The devil wants you to think it's in vain. The enemy wants you to think you are losing and losing out when you're serving God. The enemy wants to put in your mind you're wasting your time when you ought to be living to the flesh. Because the enemy know there is a heaven. He's been there. He served there. He got kicked out of there. He's not ever going back there. And he don't want you to get there. So you better listen at God and stir up the spirit of God in you. So when the enemy comes, your spirit is so stirred. It's like a tornado. If he jumps in, it's going to kick him out. You ought to give God praise for that. Oh. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Stay free. But in order to stay free, you got to get free. You got to get free. Give me some strength. You got to get free. You got to get free. Amen. It's impossible to stay free until you get free. 
Look at somebody said, you got to get free before you can stay free. Mm, mm, mm. And let me, let me tell somebody that don't know that you feel that you're in a bondage that you can't get out of. Maybe it's some lifestyle you're living up. Uh, something that you're doing that you feel I'm captured by this. Maybe it's an addiction or something that you feel like it's going to be impossible to expel it. And I just probably have to live with it the rest of my life. Jesus told me to tell you that he went before the Father as our lawyer and asked the Father to make arrangements for me to go down. He went before the Father as the Word. And the Father said, in order for me to send you on man's account, I got to make you as man is. He wrapped the Word up in flesh, sent the Word to us. The Word was preached and demonstrated in our midst. Then the Word wrapped up in flesh perished on the cross with our sins all of our sins and all of our diseases in his body he sinned not but he loved us so much until he took all of our sins and died in our place what you getting to preacher whether you know or not you are not in the bondage that you think you are you're not in a situation that you cannot be delivered Jesus is saying, when I got up out of the grave, I had the keys to every jail cell. And I opened every door that has shut man away from God. He said, you are free. You just got to come out of what you're in. Jesus is saying, the door is open. The jail cell is open. Why stay ye laying there on the cart? Why stand you sitting there in that little space? I've made you free. Come on out. Why choose to stay there in that little bit of space when the Lord said, the earth is mine and I want you to enjoy it. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein and I want you to be partaker of that. Come out. And some of us, we choose to stay in that little space. We choose to stay in that little space when the Lord said, come on out. Today the Lord is speaking to somebody in this house. I don't know exactly who it is, but I know it's for somebody. And it would behoove you to take heed to this call today. The Lord said, I want to save you. I want to deliver you from the hand of the jailer, the enemy. You are here today. And if I was you today and I wasn't saved, I would run to Jesus and experience this life that no other life can be compared to. If I was you today, I would step out from where I'm at. And I believe you're here. You got to be honest enough and bold enough, amen, to say, I'm going to make a move for me. I'm doing this because I need, I need Jesus for me. If you're here today and you're ready for that move, don't be ashamed. Just stick your hand up. Glory to God right where you are. And Jesus will come in your life and he'll change your life. And he'll reconcile you back to the Father. He'll give you that liberty where you can't get nowhere else. Amen. If you're here today and you said, I'm ready for that, just lift your hand. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. This is your time. This is your opportunity. I'm not going to try to cram it down your throat. I'm not going to jerk you out from around your pew. You got to do like the rest of us did. You got to make a decision for you. For you. Because when you die, it's going to be you. When you stand before God, it's going to be you. It ain't going to be your buddies and your pals, your girls and your guys. It ain't going to be your friend, your husband, your wife and your children. It's going to be you. Jesus, this ain't about everybody else. When you come before him, it's about you. Now, what are you going to do about you? What are you going to do about you? I would encourage you, come out. Come out of that jail cell and let Jesus have your life. And he will make you brand new. 
Somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah. I will make this appeal as long as the Lord would allow me to do it because it's necessary. Is there someone else today? Wise young lady. A wise young lady. Got a word when you come? Praise God. Is there another wise person in here? Is there another wise person in here? Are you here and you're saying, I'm going to do as this young lady. I'm going to make some changes in my life. I'm going to turn my life around. I'm not going to give the devil any more room to operate in me and cause damage. Because as long as you stay with Satan, you are vulnerable for damage. As long as you serve sin and live in sin, amen, the enemy keeps you out there, amen, where he can fire on you at will. He can get you to do stuff at will. And there are going to be some things, because we know we've been there that are saved, that you say, I, I would never do that. You stay in sin long enough, you'll find yourself doing some stuff that you said years ago, I'd never do. It's because the longer you stay in it, the more it bear witness in you. And the more it convinced you that this is the way to go. Until Jesus come in there, that yoke will never be broken. Never be destroyed. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. Glory to God. Young lady, oh my God. I am just so blessed to see young people accepting Jesus Christ. And you're going to be a new creature after this. Go with this young lady right here. Amen. Let's thank God for the soul. Lord, I'm ready, but I'm still in question whether this life I should give up. But Lord, I heard the preacher say, if I engage this way, that my sin would never go away but I want my sins to go away so this day I come I come to you and I know if I let you in I will never live in sin again Cause I made up my mind to be free. You got to make up your mind. You got to come to the conclusion that I got to do this for me. Not my mother, not my father, nor my brother, nor my sister, nor my friends, my acquaintance, nor those who I socialize with. But it's me, oh Lord. And standing in the need of salvation. Mm. Glory to God. For you, we are praying, and I pray that God will give you time to get your soul saved, you that are not. But it's like Russian roulette. When you gamble from day to day, it's like playing Russian roulette. You're putting the gun to your head, spinning the chamber with one bullet in it, and you don't know what day it is. That is going to go off. Living in sin is playing Russian roulette. Spiritual Russian roulette. With your life. Because you don't know what day you're going to die. None of us. We got a birth date. That we know about. We were born on a certain day. At a certain time. In a certain place. To a certain people. But you haven't. And you will never know. Anything about your death certificate. You will get a death certificate, but you'll be the only one that won't know. You better think about your soul more than you do your flesh. You better consider your soul more than you do your flesh. Because there's no good thing in your flesh. God wants your soul because he knows he gave you your soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To you that are backslidden, I want you to know the day that God is a God that restores. You don't have to live like that. Go and ask that person for forgiveness or forgive that person. If whatever needs to be done, whatever right 
whatever wrong need to be right, get it together so you can be restored back to the Lord. Amen? I just felt led to say that. Amen? A lot of people still trying to have church. Amen? And they haven't lived according when it comes to forgiveness. Amen? Amen. There may be someone or some ones here today that would desire to be part of this ministry, would like to join us. Amen. Our doors are hinged on love, and we're open to whosoever will let him or her come. Amen. We open our doors not only to the saints, but to the sinners, because it's here that you would hear from God and hear the truth, and it's only the truth that's going to make you free. You can't have faith until you hear the word. Faith coming by what? And hearing by what? You got to be in a place where you can hear. We don't shut our doors on sinners. Amen. We welcome sinners. Amen. Glory to God. We love sinners. Amen. We may not love their lifestyle. Amen. But in time, the word will change that lifestyle, will change that condition. Amen. Those that will receive it. Amen. You might be here today. You're saying, we want to join. I want to join the church. If you are, glory to God, right where you're standing, just lift your hand. We give you opportunity if you'd like to become a part of this ministry. If you're here today. Amen. We open our doors to you. Amen. I see no hands and that tell me either you're already a member or you are a member of a church that you're satisfied at. Amen. And we just thank God for you coming to share with us on today. Let's give our guests and our business another big hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. God is good. God is good. Yes, he is. He's good. We just want to encourage everyone in this room today, amen, to stay free. Amen. Stay focused on God because he is our reason. Amen. He is our reason for living this kind of life. Amen. And we just want the purpose in our heart to live it so that when he comes, amen, living for him will be the reason we're going to be with him forever. I just keep thinking about forever, y'all. I just keep thinking about forever. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Some of y'all might say, well, Pastor, where you find that at? Where you get that from? Amen. There used to be a rap group. I forgot the name of the group. Amen. But they would come on and they had a little song. And on the end, they said, forever? Forever, ever? Some of y'all may know what I'm talking about. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Forever, ever? And that, little, and, that little, and that little thing, it caught my attention. I said, I like that forever. And I like the words that forever? Forever, ever? Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why I want to live with God. How long? Forever? Forever, ever? <laughs> Is that long enough? Amen. Glory to God. Call forever is without end. Is that right? Praise God. We just thank the Lord. Amen. And I just want to thank God. To our visitors and our guests, First Lady and I want you to come, please. We just want to shake your hand. And we got something we want to give to you before you leave. We won't hold you up about five minutes. Amen. All of our guests and visitors, come quickly. Amen. Guests, praise. Let's thank God for our guests and our visitors today. Bless you, young lady. We're so glad to have you with us. Young lady, so glad to have you with us. Young man, thank you for coming. Amen. Oh, Timothy McCardle, sister, y'all. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're glad. This is, that's your daughter. Okay. Timothy, I see where you get your good looks from now. I met Tim's family at the uh, graduation. Amen. Fine family. Beautiful family. And we thank God for you all coming our way today. Amen. We don't take your visitation lightly. And we want you to know that we want to be your friends. Anytime you're in the area, amen, looking for some other fellowship, just know over here, deeper life, we welcome you. And we're going to show you a little bit more of that. Glory to God. I want you to follow. Amen. Where is, okay, Mike, will you come a little closer, son? Glory to God. I want you to follow this handsome young man, if you will. And we want to, amen, show you a little bit more about the ministry. Praise God. Amen. All right, now. So glad to have you with us. Amen. From where? Detroit? All right, now. Glory to God. The Motor City. Amen. That's good. We're so glad to have you guys. Amen. I want y'all to go with Elder Best, and he's going to show you something, and then we're going to feed you before you leave. Is that all right? See, we feed you spiritually and physically. <laughs> Amen. God is just great. Somebody say, God is great. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Let's give it up for the men one more time. Woo! Yes, sir. I'm just as proud of them I can be. 
Amen. Somebody say, every first Sunday. Every fourth Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Fourth Sunday. Did I prophesy? Did I prophesy? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we lift this oil to you, God. We can't do a thing with it, but lift it. But God, you can change it from a natural to a supernatural. Lay your hands upon it and consecrate it. That as it's used by the user and those they use it upon and whatever they place it on, God, it will have a supernatural effect. Now, Lord, we give it to you. You put it in the earth. You made it in its natural state. And we know because you are supernatural. You can change it. And today we ask you to change it. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise if you will. Let's keep Sister Shelby Mills in prayer. Keep her in much prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's keep, uh, amen, Sister Morgan, Sandra Morgan. Her mother passed on last week. Amen. The funeral is Tuesday, I believe it is. Amen. It's going to be at uh, Atkinson uh, Chapel. Glory to God. That's over near the airport. Amen. That's near the airport. She's been out for quite a while from us with her mother. Her mother was very ailing and she's been with her. Amen. Some of you know Sandra, some of you don't. But let's keep her in prayer. Let's keep all the sick. Let's keep everybody lifted. Amen. Can we do that? Amen. Let's just keep ourselves, amen, in touch with each other's situations. Amen. To all the college kids that's home, amen, we just thank God for you all. Amen. Come into church. Because you can say, I'm grown now. It depends on what house you stay in, don't it? <laughs> I understand that. But I know you come because you, amen. And remember, when you go to college, when you go to military, when you go places like that, don't forget how you were brought up. Don't forget where you were brought up. Remember the ministry till you find a local church. Support here. You can't be here in present. You can be here in other ways till you find a fellowship. Amen. Sometimes we soon forget. Sister Kathleen Simmons, amen, our uh, 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 ex uh uh, youth pastor, amen, she, she instilled so much love and patience and concern. She helped so many kids go to college. Yes, she did. Is Kat still here? Bless you, sweetheart. Raise your hand real high. That's my sister-in-law, y'all. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to be honest. I used to get on her. I said, look, you're overworking yourself. You're already stretched out at the church. You're already, amen, seven days a week. I don't care where we were at. It was about children's church. I don't care. We could be we could be on a fire. The house could be burning down. Can't be standing talking about children's church. <laughs> she loved the youth, and she helped a lot of families to get your children in college. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. If the truth be told, and know what? And a lot of children going to college, graduate, we don't hear nothing from them. They don't come no more and don't send nothing so that we can support helping the next group of children to get through. So don't forget to sow into your fellowship. Amen. Because others are coming just like you did and we can be able or we can afford to continue to do ministry. Can we do that? Until you find a local church. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think it's all right. I think it's good. Amen. Don't forget the bridge that brought you across. Glory to God. Don't, don't, don't forget the bridge that brought you across. Glory to God. Amen. If the truth well, I'm, I ain't going to go no further. Praise God. God bless you. That's my benediction. God, I just feel in my spirit. God bless you. Amen. So let it be.